What I'm actually here to do is talk about the impact of IoT, the Internet of Things, on product design. When you want to do things such as insights into how something operates, but also understand how to improve it and to look for things like gaps and so forth, so that you have the next fuel for innovation, you can do pretty incredible things like this when you can get to the information, a huge amount of information, process it and turn it into something that's going to be valuable. So I put this together very quickly. This is a dashboard built in uh, Microsoft Power BI, actually. And uh, so it's a very visual because it's going to be used by a lot of people. So it's not just about looking at a spreadsheet, which is probably how you look at a lot of data today, but making it visual and also making it interactive so that you can get to the information that you need. The idea is not just to have great maintenance. We can do that with IoT today. The point is we want to have great design. We want to be able to do a fantastic job of design by learning from all this information so that we can predict what's next and we can sort of head things off at the pass if you want. We can be a little bit ahead of where the customer is because we can see the information. So what I did, of course, is I was thinking about this, I called Aris. So I need to understand this a little bit more. I think I know a thing or two about PLM, but not like you. I said, I understand this IoT thing, I've got that. Now help me work this out. And they said, you know, actually we've been thinking about this too. A customer's been talking about this. So we said, well, let's build something. Let's put something together very quickly. Let's put Aris Innovator and Microsoft Azure together in a new way and see how it can operate. How about we do an example where we look at the product lifecycle of an aircraft? Let's just take a look at the actual aircraft itself. In this particular case, I thought I would take something really big. So I went for Airbus A380. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Two main things on the A380, which I think are really interesting, it has a quick access recorder. It records steady state information, lots of it, about every onboard system that there is. And then we have high frequency information transmitted by satellite. Small amount of information, but we get lots of it. So we want to accumulate all of that from our thing. Our A380 is a new thing. But in order to make this valuable, we also have to combine that with enterprise information. We need to understand a little bit about maintenance as it's been performed. We need to look at the log books, have a look at the flight schedules and so forth. And then we would like to hook it up with other interesting things such as weather. So that when we're looking at that flight and its dynamics and its overall performance, was weather a contributing factor? Now we take all of this and we can accumulate all this information into Microsoft Azure today. We have a product for this called IoT Suite. So we've got something that can connect all of this up today. And then from that, using really good analytics and some machine learning as well. So we've got a little bit of AI underneath the hood that can help look at things in order to come up with the right prediction. We can do things such as anomaly detection. We can do things like remaining useful life, not just on the engines, but the rest of the systems as well. Overall performance, any maintenance events that come up through the aircraft itself and so forth. Then I want to take the information and I want to put it inside of Aris Innovator. And I want to make it useful. And as I mentioned, not just downstream, not just for maintenance and for overhaul and so forth. I want to use it for design purposes. So I thought, let's go even deeper again how it at work. This is before we're going to build anything even, just thinking through the scenarios sort of one level deeper. So I thought, OK, well, let's take a fuel pump. In this particular case, not a pump on an engine. Let's just take one that goes onto the airframe itself, so moving fuel around in flight and so forth. What we've been able to do is calculate a soft life versus the hard life. We've been able to do that because we've got all of this sensor information around the pump that tells us things about its condition, pressure anomalies and so forth. So rather than knowing that the pump is going to expire in 5,000 hours, we can say actually it's going to run 7,000 because it's a really well-designed pump or maybe it's not going so well on this aircraft for whatever parameter, it's only going to run for 3,000. That I can take into DFMEA. So you can do failure mode analysis inside of Aris Innovator. Now, it's really interesting when you can augment it with the actual performance information coming from that pump. Once you have that, you can then analyze across your entire product portfolio of pumps that you create, all the different variants, whether they go onto A380 or any other aircraft. And then you can use that to create your engineering change request. So you've got a flow from the real pump that's running in a real aircraft on its particular route for a particular airline even, and then have all of that information flow through to generate that change. So then I thought, let's go even further than that. What would it look like? 
What sort of architecture would it look like in order to make this work? Do we have all of the right pieces together before we actually try and cut some code and go and create something? So first of all, we've got our things. Well, I'll just treat this generically because you will do more than aircraft. You'll be doing vehicles and robots and all sorts of different things. So we need to make sure that it's going to work with every type of device. And we'll take that information in to Azure IoT Suite. This is where we will have our analytics will be there for us. We'll have our machine learning that we can set up and so forth to kind of learn from the information and create our predictions and so forth. And then we'll take it into a set of tools. And this is where a couple of the choices that we've made with Aris are really beginning to pay off. One of them, uh, several years ago now, is we asked Aris if they would put Aris Innovator into our cloud, if they would put it into Microsoft Azure. And they did, and they could do it really easily, which was really excellent. And along the way, they've said, well, it's working out. People are using it, and they're you know, doing some POCs and some things like that, and it's working out really well. And, uh, is that it, Simon? And I said, no, there's going to be much more than that. But I couldn't reveal it until we could get here today. So what makes this so interesting is that when you have PLM running in the cloud, and you also have all of your data from IoT running in the cloud, everything is together in the one place. I would say where it should be, in one place. But also respect that for many of you, you run Aris Innovator on-premise. And so you can do that too. You can have a mix between the information and choose where you need it to be. Now, once we get it there, the thing that's interesting is it can be presented inside of Aris Innovator, no problem. We understand how to do that, too. But what I thought that I would do, perhaps a little bit selfishly, is I'd see what it would look like in a Microsoft product so that I could take that information out of Aris Innovator myself and I could mash it with the information coming from an A380 and I could see what it would really look like. And the fun thing is I could look at that information almost anywhere. I could look at it on my phone, as an example. I could look at it on a PC or anywhere else, for that matter. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so we tried to make something beautiful because we knew that we would be putting in front of a large crowd today. So rather than just rows and columns, we'd do something that the tool can actually do, which is create a bind between the information and a graphic. So we took one of these engines, sort of like a generic engine picture, and then we just sort of ordered it and colored it through by the amount of faults that we had received over a period of time for that particular engine. So on the right-hand side, what you can see is just like a stack diagram, a bar chart essentially, of the faults. But what we've done, something I thought was rather clever, is we've mixed that with how many change orders were sent against that particular part of the aircraft engine. So that we've got a mixing of the information becomes much more valuable. So now we're not just looking at things in isolation, we're looking at them together. So I have the actual performance information against what I'm actually doing in my design group. That should give me an indication of perhaps there is a design problem that exists there, or perhaps we've got some other issue that we need to overcome in order to make this work. And the really cool thing is that I could hook this up and do it with Aris Innovator pretty quickly. 